This video is sponsored by Lomi. I've been making videos on sustainability, everything from solar panels and batteries to EVs for five years now on YouTube. But I have a really big surprise. I'm finally gonna do a series that I've been wanting to do for the longest time. And that's gonna be taking this house, the house we live in, and making it a Earthship or a net zero home. So what does that mean then? Well, the three main utilities you have running to your house are electricity, natural gas, and water. Our goal then is to take this old house and convert it, retrofit it into an Earthship or a net zero house where we produce all our own electricity, get rid of natural gas, and make our own water, if that's even possible. <laughs> So why are we doing this? Well, your motivations may vary. Maybe you want to save money on your electric bill. Maybe you want to be prepared for emergencies or be more self-reliant or maybe care about the planet. But whatever your motivation is, we got you covered. So one thing I want to make really clear is that this isn't about me or my journey. This is about you. So if you've ever thought about getting solar panels or a home battery, saving on water, any of these sorts of things, you're in the right place because we're gonna go all out. Our goal is to be completely 100% net zero. And I don't know if we're ever gonna fully reach that goal, but we're gonna cover every possible technology we can and share it with you. Some of the stuff will make sense. It'll be a home run. Some of it will be a not recommend, but either way, we're gonna take everything we learn and share it with you and have it on our website for you to take a look at. We live in San Diego. So for us, our biggest challenge is gonna be water. And you can see we've got quite a bit of yard, we've got trees everywhere, and that's gonna be the big challenge. But for us, the electricity is gonna be pretty easy because we have a ton of sunshine. But based on where you live, our recommendations might be different. If it's really hot or cold where you live, maybe a geothermal heat pump makes sense, maybe it doesn't. But we will cover it all and put it together in a package that will make sense no matter where you live. And so for an example of just how far we're gonna go on this series, I got a quote for an atmospheric water generator. It's basically a big dehumidifier that collects water out of the air. And it came out to be $86,000 and it runs on five kilowatts of electricity. But what I was thinking was, if we have enough solar, what if we just run it and produce 200 gallons of water a day? Is that enough? We'll find out. And that's gonna be later on because we don't have that kind of money and this is all gonna be pretty expensive. But over the years, we will cover every single technology and if it makes sense for you. By the way, have you ever wondered how much water is used when you run your sprinklers? Well, this is called the Flume Smart Water Meter and it'll tell you in real time how much water you're using. And so if you look here, we were using pretty much nothing a couple of minutes ago. And as soon as we turn the sprinklers on, we're looking like 17 gallons a minute. <laughs> and you can imagine how much we're gonna have to run to keep this grass green. But the first thing I would say to any adventure is metering. You have to know your data, right? So for water, we're gonna have the Flume water meter, that video, will be all by itself, a full review of it. We'll have that posted in the description as soon as it's available. But for your electricity usage, how can you monitor that? We're gonna get a SPAN smart panel, which will monitor every circuit in real time and show you where your energy is being used. For natural gas, we'll have to figure that out, try to eliminate that. But the first key is to track it. When you see how much water you're using, you can make better decisions and find leaks and things like that. So that'll be one of the key parts to this series is data. It'll be that Tuba Da Vinci style of data and science, and we will try to share what kind of tools you can use to better understand your house. So let's talk about what we're starting with. This house was built 50 years ago. As a result, it's terribly inefficient. The walls aren't insulated. The windows are really terrible and let a ton of heat in. Parts of the house have old electrical wires which need to be pulled out and replaced because they're not grounded and they kind of could be a fire hazard. Our doors aren't even weather sealed. Our new house also has a pool, which is really amazing for summertime parties, but it's also really expensive. Before we get back to the show, I have to tell you about the most remarkable little appliance I've seen in years. This is Lomi, a ridiculously cool, beautiful kitchen electric composter. If you do any amount of cooking, I'm sure you're familiar with this. Food scraps from vegetables, fruit, even coffee grounds and eggshells. This isn't trash, it's the basis for future plant food but usually it takes months to break down. But with Lomi, you can take this and turn it into nutrient-rich dirt in just hours. Using Lomi twice a week can reduce your waste footprint by 50%. It has three modes, an eco mode, which uses just around one kilowatt hour of energy, 
and takes three to five hours. Use grow mode and in 16 to 20 hours, you have nutrient rich dirt that's perfect to turn back around and add to a garden or a house plant. There's even a loamy approved mode which can break down loamy approved bioplastics. Whether you live in a small studio apartment or a farm, convert your food scraps quickly into dirt with Lomi. I've had mine for over a month and I still get a kick out of seeing the results every morning. Use my link, links.pella.earth slash Ricky May to check out this revolutionary new product today. Huge thanks to Lomi and to you for supporting the companies that support the show. For pool water heating, we have these thermal solar panels. And if you've ever thought, hey, why not heat my pool for free and get these? Are they a good idea? Let me show you something. While these panels are in good shape and working well, there's another run where it's a different story. All this white you're seeing is leaks from the system. We have a saltwater pool. And so this has been leaking on my roof actively. You can kind of see a little bit down there all around here. And look over here. These are straight up geysers leaking out hot pool water all day when these are running. You can tell just how much they've been patched over the years and how much of a headache they are. So if you ask me, should I get solar or water heaters for my pool? Honestly, I would not. I don't like the idea of water being on my roof. In my previous house, I had solar for 10 years. Nothing ever happened. They were bulletproof. But these, you can just tell by the material baking in the sun. And these are about 10 years old. They're not gonna last very long. So what I'm gonna do is rip all this out and cover my entire southern facing roof with solar panels and then get a heat pump water heater that I can run on electricity when I need it. Because the reality is I don't need to always heat my pool, but I always need electricity. So in my opinion, you're better off getting solar panels. But maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I changed my mind, I don't know. Subscribe and stay tuned because we'll share that information and data with you. And also, check this out. This is our smart Wi-Fi enabled pool cleaning robot. Now what makes this so interesting is it runs on electricity. This is the power cord instead of the pool suction like the pool suction type of cleaners do. As a result, I don't have to have this 2000 watt pool pump running all the time. So I've cut the usage of the pump from seven hours a day down to about three and I have this running twice a day. And as a result, the pool is cleaner than ever. And believe it or not, I'm saving almost $100 a month on my electric bill. This robot with the added reduction in the pool running time saves me about 200 kilowatt hours a month. And every product we review, like this pool robot, will have a deeper dive on our website with affiliate links. One way you can support our efforts because all these things we're gonna buy with our own money. So the reviews are gonna be comprehensive and totally open. We'll highlight the pros and cons and make it really easy for you guys to make buying decisions. And to get a feel for how bad our roof is, you can see it's not in the worst shape, but it's clearly falling apart. All of this needs to be changed. Plus, being over 20 years old, the underlayment, the really the part that keeps you protected from the weather is probably degraded as well. So we got to rip all this out. And in some areas like over here, it's really bad. You can just tell the parts where the sun hits it most, it's weathered quite a bit. And this part here is particularly bad. It's got like mildew and growth and just look how dark it is. So before we can even go solar, we got to rip out all of this and add a new roof. Sounding expensive? Yeah. That's why any help you can support with Patreon or just subscribing, we would really appreciate. One of the main reasons why we bought this house is it's actually two houses. This is the main house where we're going to be living. It's a 3,000 square foot, five bedroom, three bathroom house with two kitchens. It has a little in-law unit. But the really exciting part about this house is this over here, our second house. And this is going to be the new Tuba Da Vinci World Headquarters. This is where the team is going to be sitting, where our studio for filming is going to be. And you can see it's kind of in shambles. And that's because, well, we just ripped out a bunch of old electrical. The house used to have the old style cable. It wasn't grounded. Our home inspection told us that. So we knew we'd have to upgrade it. The reason we did it today is because we're actually doing a new installation. I'll show you here in a minute. But the other issue that that outlined is the lack of insulation. These older homes, especially in California, didn't have insulation. Depending where you live, that might change. But for us, it's just as quick and easy as adding some radiant barrier and then some traditional fiberglass insulation before we put the walls back up. Here's an example of what that'll look like when we're done. But the reason why this place looks like this is let me show you a little quick peek at what we're working on right now. These are my EcoFlow Delta Pros, and this is a quick look at the EcoFlow 
smart home panel. This will allow us to power our studio and our office from these batteries and charge over solar. So that's a video we're working on, that'll come pretty soon. But that project forced us to expedite our electrical work. So now let's talk about our solar strategy. For the second house over there, we're going to have the EcoFlow Delta Pros as our battery storage solution, and we're going to power them with solar panels that are off-grid. So the solar panels on top of that house will just feed into the EcoFlow DC, charge the batteries, and will power that house from the batteries at night, and basically kind of be off-grid, no permits or anything else. On the main house, we're going to have solar on all the south-facing parts of the roof, and we're gonna be a permitted on-grid solution for that. For the batteries for the main house, we're thinking a Tesla Powerwall or something like that. As I mentioned, the EcoFlows are because they're portable, we can move them with us and take them on adventures and RV trips. But for the main house, we're gonna have a dedicated stationary battery pack. We mentioned we wanna get rid of natural gas. So what are the big natural gas appliances that we have? Well, we have ranges like this, our furnace for both houses or natural gas, and our water heater and clothes dryer. So what can we do? Well, what if we got a heat pump furnace for the heating, a heat pump clothes dryer, and as far as the range goes, we can go convection electric or something else. We've got to figure that out. Also, our appliances are ancient. Fun fact, if you touch a refrigerator and it's cold like this one, that means it's not very well insulated and all that heat that you're pumping out is just gonna go right back in. So this is gonna be running and wasting more electricity than we need to. So we're gonna upgrade our appliances and share with you guys if it's worth it or not because these appliances are super expensive. The buyback periods are probably pretty long and it might or might not be worth it. We'll find out. So one of the things we mentioned is we wanna get rid of natural gas because we can't make that here on site. So what does that mean? getting rid of this. This is our water heater for the main house. This is natural gas. The heater for the main house, also natural gas, and this clothes dryer. So what can we do? Well, they make a heat pump clothes dryer that I'm super curious about. So we're going to buy it, review the two side by side, look at how much energy they produce and how well they perform and see if it's worth making that upgrade. Also, I want to get a heat pump water heater, which will take the heat from the garage to heat the water on electricity. So give it natural gas. For the furnace, I want to do a geothermal system. Believe it or not, we're thinking about doing a geothermal system for heating and cooling to lower our electric bills. So those things we can eliminate, but getting rid of natural gas might not be entirely possible. For example, our second house only has a 60 amp sub panel. So that means that getting a tankless electric water heater is out of the question. And even a heat pump water heater would require a 240 volt line and it might just use too much power. And this house will have tons of computers and gears and gadgets and stuff. And we can't really consume any more electricity than that. And I'm not trying to trench a new electric line. So for that reason, what I'm thinking about doing is getting a tankless natural gas water heater for this house, because we don't take showers in this house. We take them in the main house and a tankless system doesn't use any natural gas unless it's being used. So I think we'll have water when we need it, hot water, but it won't really need to be used very often and the natural gas should be okay. Again, this is the reality. We're not gonna be able to eliminate everything entirely. That's just probably not practical, but we wanna try. We wanna to try to get as close to net zero as possible. So one thing you should know about me is I'm not a hippie. I'm a hardcore capitalist. I believe it's gonna be the scientists and engineers working at amazing companies that are gonna solve the problems of our future. Companies like Tesla and Elon Musk, people, the people who almost single-handedly brought us electric cars and completely changed the direction of the automotive industry. But there's tons of smaller companies that don't have the reach and power of Elon Musk. And those are the companies that we wanna share with all of you. So that is the new mission statement of 2Bit Da Vinci, building a smarter and sustainable life. And it all starts here with your house. We'll also talk about EVs and other stuff as well, but you'll start to see this theme throughout our videos. We're gonna talk about things that actually relate to you, things that you can buy, upgrade your house with, put in your garage, and things that can actually make a difference. So if that all sounds good to you guys, hit that subscribe button, join us for our journey, and we'll see you guys soon.